Perfect. All right. I love it. I love it. We are on today with Rob and myself and Michelle. Rob, it's been amazing watching your journey, um, becoming the leader of leaders. Uh, and we were just talking about some of those trips that you've set up to mastermind in different locations. Um, and I, I love the fact that coming in as a trainer, you have a solid, solid background building a massive organization, going to the top of the company, uh, a company that was very established at the time into 40 different countries on and on and on. So um, I, I don't want to spend a ton of time uh, on just an intro, but thank you, Rob, from the bottom of our heart. Uh, we respect your time, your energy, your value, um, and just know that uh, we we truly, truly appreciate you. And well, if I can um, add in, oh, go ahead, go. Right. No, Michelle, well, you're good. Sorry. It's just, I have so much respect and love and appreciation for you and just the human that you are. He is such a strong, strong family man as well. And when we say leader, yes, he's a leader in the network marketing profession um, and business and all of that, but he's a leader in life. And so we hold close to us anybody that, you know, we bring forward to friends, family, just like network marketing. We will never promote something unless it's that and then some. It's the same with humans. Rob and the way that he um, raises his children, his relationship with his wife, um, the integrity and the love that he has for the profession and his friends and just his core and the way um, that he's lifting up youth. Rob, I have I just love watching what you're doing for the youth and your kids and their friends to give them vision for their own lives. It makes me crazy emotional. So I just want to thank you and just... Um, I, I just really, really respect and look up to you and just want them to know it's, it's, you're a, you're a big deal. Yes. In the network marketing woohoo awesome world, but you're just a phenomenal human and that's what matters most to us. So thank you. Well, you guys are both uh, too nice. And that was my, my goal actually, when I started, you know, my dad grew up crazy wealthy and a lot of people maybe came from broken homes or different things, but uh, and we were probably just upper middle class and he would always just say like wealth is really time and he would go play tennis with us and you know my siblings three to four hours every day every day and then if we shifted to baseball or basketball it was the same thing and he just said look I grew up like he grew up like his his family bought like the Bean Crosby mansion had to close off a wing and you know, he's like, that's, that's all that really mattered though. It wasn't the money. It was the money, what it could do. And so when I, whenever I say wealth, I'm like, whatever that means, humanitarian trips, whatever for me. So you guys know, I, I've done now, I think 29 teenage mastermind sessions. I've got one in two days from now. And, um, they started two years ago and we've got a kid that's speaking that made a million dollars before he turned uh, 19 years old. And to them, he's like TikTok famous, which is a different world. I don't, you know, it's like to them, it's all about that. It's hilarious. And, uh, you know, it's just different, but stuff like that. I coached, I uh, just finished coaching the boys high school season this year. I do the boys and the girls and all of that is because of, of, you know, network marketing and the ability to, to actually have time. And so for me, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be able to be a better father, husband, leader, neighbor, right. Coach and all those things and to provide. So that's why, you know, it's uh, get so passionate about it, but uh, yeah, I went through the lowest of lows. So, you know, those are the highest of highs. I had times where I worked 80 hours a week and made less than $400 for the month and wanted to laugh at the check or cry at the check. I wasn't sure because back in the day they'd send the checks and that wasn't direct deposit. So uh, I've been through it. I just felt, felt forward, I think, faster than most people. And so I'm happy to share personal stories and insights, as well as, you know, things that I keep learning as I get to coach all the top leaders or many of them in the industry, I'm still learning always. You know? mm -hmm. Amen. I tell our girls, I said, I'm like a little baby every day, just growing and learning. There's so much to learn. So thank you for that. So yeah. you, you get to hang around with top leaders. I mean, in pretty much every company that's out there. Um, one of the things that we, we wanted our leadership group to really understand is the difference inside of the profession between kind of the direct sales realm and the multi-level marketing where it's subscription-based yep. and the ability to really, you know, build out a network if you're in the network marketing side with monthly subscriptions on consumable products versus mm -hmm. 
having to resell and resell and resell? What what do you kind of see as, as those differences in the companies that, that you work with? Yeah, so teach their own, first and foremost. Uh, yeah. Never, I'm going to give the pros and cons. Totally. Um, you know, for me, what I was interested in the most was the network marketing model because, you know, the vision that I bought, we can all buy or sell anything that's told to us. But I bought the vision of, you know, that I was going to feel very underpaid for a while and then feel very overpaid for a while. Uh, I felt like, you know, it was going to be the most underpaid profession sometimes in the beginning. Uh, and and in the back end, the most overpaid in, in some ways, however you want to look at it. And when you look at a job, and then I'll relate that to direct sales is, you know, the employer is taking on all the risk. And so what they do is, is they'll, they'll pay you a, a quick fix amount that takes care of you. But, you know, if you go make that sell or bring someone into the restaurant and let's say that person becomes the best person ever who starts bringing their company in and all their friends and they refer people and that that restaurant ends up doing 200,000 in sales, um, you don't make any money off that. Or if you're the salesperson, typically you make money off bringing that person in once. And so they'll pay you a lot more on the front end knowing that they're going to make their money on the back end. Whereas network marketing is, is a form of entrepreneurism. It's a form of it where it, I believe it's sharing a lot more of the long-term profits um, where you can make that, um, you know, I, I don't want to say residual in, the, in in a negative way, like the FTC can get mad because of course people can cancel any time and there's no guarantees or anything like that. Uh, but where you feel like you've got this subscription type model. So direct sales, and I've got a lot of, you know, people around here where I live that do uh, different forms of direct sales. They'll go do door to door and knock. And they'll pay them just tons of money. Uh, I, and I'm talking like friends that are really good, make anywhere from, you know, if they're good, $200,000 in a summer uh, up to over half a million dollars in a summer. And that's talking like the, the the high end insane direct sales. Whereas the guys that become the top managers, they're the ones that get paid the residuals or the owners. And, and one of the guys that taught his kids tennis for years, sold a company called Vivint. And it sold for almost $2 billion. So you see the, the difference. And I know those are high numbers. There's other types that I have friends that uh, do affiliate type marketing. And they'll go sell. And, and typically, I know there's different variations. They'll go sell once. And again, they'll pay them um, a lot on the front end. My brother-in-law was the CEO of Backcountry, a very large company. And he told me he crushed it with affiliates. Now, those affiliates would bring in customers and they could make, you know, whatever, five, ten, twenty thousand. 20,000. But then after that, it's like they had to start all over again. And eventually that can get exhausting. So I looked at it as something that, especially if you have a sticky uh, product, which I know you guys do, uh, one of the most sticky products, then now you can build something that can continue to grow. Now when I say continue to grow, I'm not exaggerating. It's not like you have a hundred people order and they order forever. Right. But I mean, if you recruit a hundred and even if you have or sponsor or people buy and you got 60 or 70 and uh, that keeps staying on it, you know, that continues to grow as you continue to build your business and that builds that, that um, continuity. And so for me, I'm big on that. I mean, I've got real estate, but put in perspective, real estate's great. Uh, my three rental properties in, in Florida I had to put down like $60,000 for a $300,000 property. And I hope to cash flow 350 bucks a month after like property taxes and right. insurance and things breaking and all that crap. And that's considered a good investment. And then I hope to appreciate like, you know, four or 5% a year. Um, that's the average is 5%. Obviously things haven't been that the last several years. So you know, that's where I look at it is, 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 and, and a lot of, I, I think a lot of times we get so caught up in the short term and I get it. If you don't take care of the short term, there's in the long term. And that's where for most people I'll say, use your job to pay your bills as Jim Rohn says, and use this business to build your dreams, but don't get so nearsighted that you lose, lose um, the long-term focus because rich people think long-term, poor people think short-term that's spiritually, financially, physically, mentally, and in all aspects of life. I'll say that again. Rich people think long-term, poor people think short-term. That's spiritually, financially, physically, mentally, and in all aspects of life. And so I think all too often times get tough. Um, people just focus just on the short-term. And then three, four, five, six years from now, they find themselves in the exact same place. And yeah. they're like, well, why am I here? Because right. you were just focused on the short-term, which is, again, I'm not ripping on it. to each their own what works. But yeah. if there's a back end to it, 
it's like a better paid job, right? Where you're starting over and over and over and over again. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And that was one of our uh, first mentors, Stu Brody. He said that to us too. And it took me a while to understand what he meant, but he told us flat out, he goes, at first, it's going to seem like you're drastically underpaid for what you're doing. Yeah. But if you stay in it and do the right behaviors for long enough, there's this tipping point that's going to happen where you're going to be so drastically overpaid. It's not even funny. And that always stuck in the back of my head. We can do this long enough till we get to that tipping point. But that's the goal, right? It is to build that base up enough that if you do need to take a month off uh, and your kids have stuff going on, that, that you have the time freedom to do that. You're not a cog in the wheel that has to keep churning the output, right? Yeah. And that's what I was going to comment or, you know, get your insights on because we've had so many instances in our own personal life. And it happens to everybody because we're humans of a death of a sudden sickness mm -hmm. of a family, just needing something really quick or a friend. And, and you just literally have to stop in the moment and, and leave and to be able to have that stability. So, you know, thinking in regards to that vision, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to add to that, but it's a peacemaker so many times. Yeah. And, and everything we, all the decisions we make is based on the vision that we have. And that's when people say the story you tell yourself. So that's why, you know, that's what leadership is all about. And the first thing is to lead yourself. Um, and it's not wrong. I get it. Like if someone's broke and they need to figure it out, but just don't, don't go pick up dollar bills. Right. Uh, because you just need it now. And then all of a sudden you get addicted to that where you're like, oh my goodness. And then in the end, on the back end, you're giving yeah. up, you know, hundred dollar bills, thousands and tens of thousands. And it can become easy because, you know, example, let's say a leader's making a hundred thousand dollars a year and all of a sudden their income drops to 80, they start to panic and they go find something else and teach their own. You know, a lot of you could just focus on what you're doing and you could get that back up and they go do a little and all of a sudden they're like, oh, I just made an extra like 20. Well, then all of a sudden they focus on that and then it's 30, 40, 50 and they're feeling good because now they're taking care of their current bills, right? But then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, if I would have kept building that other as well, then that yeah. could be at 110, 120 and then it grow to 150, 160. And so it's just perspective. I do get it. I understand it's, it's every person's different. You got to do what you got to do. Um, but in the end, don't lose sight of how valuable this business is. It's 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 your whole goal and your dreams and your ambitions. Will the other thing achieve that for you long term? And that's a great way to challenge. Uh, and I don't know. I, I'm sure there's different scenarios. Maybe that's the case. Right. But more often than not, it's not more often than not. You already have the vehicle. And you need to focus more on it. Because let's be honest, um, you know, most leaders are in survivor mode. And even though they preach to everyone to be in conquer mode and take urgency, most are hanging around and they're fake working and they're plugging everyone in and texting them. Did you watch the Zoom? Did you do the training? But as Ralph Waldo Emerson says, what you do speak so loudly, I cannot hear what you say. And they're wondering why their business isn't duplicating, but they've heard the cliches, be the leader, speed of the pack. And it's like, you heard it like you're not working. Everyone knows when you're fake working, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, and you're trying to get everyone else to do what you once did, but not what you're currently doing. And you're wondering why your income's sliding back. And then it's like, ask yourself the question, well, how many new invites did you make? You're telling everyone else to do it. Your business is not in momentum right now. How many did you do? Like we teach people, successful people just do the basics better. Are you doing the basics or are you just trying to teach everybody to do what you once did? And that's what duplicates, right? So whatever we do well duplicates sometimes, whatever we do poorly almost always duplicates. And that's in leadership. And for those of you parents, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Stuff we do good, and sometimes. Stuff we do poorly, right? And then, you know, spouses are pointing at each other like, that was you. No, that was you. And maybe it was both of us. So it's just reality. So this mastermind that we're doing with our leaders is really based around social media and just at like a 10,000 foot overview, how do you see within our profession, um, selling and recruiting on social media? Like, what does that look like to you? 
Yeah, I mean, you got two different platforms. Um, I mean, obviously, we could go into to TikTok and, you know, people are using different platforms, whether it's YouTube or Pinterest or LinkedIn, but the main platforms for most are Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. And, you know, Instagram is a lot more uh, niches to riches. Instagram is a lot less of like create like your five pillars and that sort of thing. Like think about the people you follow that aren't your friends. You're typically following for a purpose, whether it's you're following this person because they travel a ton and you want to follow them just for travel and travel tips. Well, you don't want that person that's giving you travel tips to, you know, tell you, you know, one story about their dog, another story, you know, about their family, another story about their protein, another story, right, about them working out, and then it's travel. Like you are following them for solution. So on Instagram, you can be a lot more just, you know, uh, clear one simple message. I know some people just create, you know, separate Instagrams or go all in on it. That's a totally different discussion. Facebook's a little bit more unique. Uh, Facebook's a lot more of a lot less uh, niche oriented, meaning a lot of times they're going to just like your vibe or your style and that sort of thing. And that's where people, you know, it's social media there, right? They want to get to know you a little bit more um, on Facebook. And so that's where, you know, you're going to show a little bit more of your life, right? And, and not in a fake way, but, you know, what are the things that people like and connect about you? And, and that's the whole people do business with, they know, like, and trust. And so it's a lot more like that as you're consistent. And there, yep. there are really two styles with it. There are people that are more indirect. And so let's say we got seven days and whether, you know, stories, reels, posts, lives, you know, of those seven days, let's say five of those days, you know, we're, what we're doing is we're growing our audience and we're growing our audience by, you know, bringing them in and, and creating contents that, you know, it could be something funny, fun, inspirational. I share things that I think are funny. I share things about travel, I share things about family. I share things that are inspirational. And those are the main things that I share. And inside of those, I have, you know, things that go with it. And then the other two days a week are either typically more direct or indirect. And it really just depends on the person's style. Both work really, really well. Like if I wanted to, you know, talk about a, a specific, maybe health and wellness, even if my product didn't have to do with you know, specific to working out, let's say it was a protein and you could say it, it, it is, then I could share like, hey, do you prefer cardio or lifting weights, right? And then I could share, hey, here are some of the insights of some of the journey that I'm going on for working out. Here are some of the things that I learned. Um, you know, here are some of my, my recipes and stuff like that. So that's providing like an indirect uh, value. And then yeah. the direct obviously is, a lot more of, right, you're providing compelling solutions for uh, people to, to reach out to you. A lot more easy to do so for the masses from a product standpoint. I know we're talking leaders. Um, from a leader standpoint, obviously, you have more credibility. And so something you can do for the masses, you know, I, I teach more focus on the product. And that's coming from me who, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I was scared to sign up a customer my first like four years. And I was the number one recruiter out of a million distributors. Like if someone signed up for it back then, it was way too expensive packages, right? You can't do that really anymore. But we're talking like $1,800 packages. That was less scary for me than someone signed up for like $50 product. Like, isn't that crazy, <laughs> right? It was like, so um, if you're a leader, right? It's a lot more easy to, you know, provide value and provide credibility where you can do the same thing on just, you know, you, you're showing your travel, but then you're showing a little bit of lifestyle, but you're also sharing like tips, however you want to position it, you know, for you being an expert or a reporter on it. So, you know, there's the different platforms as you go, but, you know, at some point people need to understand that attraction marketing isn't what most people think. It's not where you're going to have unlimited amount of leads and people reach out to your inbox. Like that's super, super rare like crazy influence or even the influential people in network marketing don't get that that often. Instead, you do a good enough job that you're chipping away at the at the trust and and you know likability and you're creating a stronger connection so that when you do reach out to them, uh, example, maybe instead of having one out of 10 that say yes, maybe you have two out of 10. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but you just doubled your yeah. numbers. And so if you're consistent on social media, 
Uh, it's not taking away from doing the number one money-making activity or income-producing activity, which is making those new invites about your product or business. All it does is increase what you should be already doing, the efficiency. Uh, because you've built that, where now you're not some random stranger, even if it's a close friend, they, they still are watching what you're doing right. um, through your journey on social media. Yeah, totally, totally. Michelle's really good at that. 10 years later, we're like, oh, we had no idea you were still watching and now all of a sudden you're buying it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you were in Bora Bora, I'll sign up. I'm in, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so once you, you know, have that relationship, you get them in as a customer or a consultant, but especially for a lot of people, well, let's just say both. Um, yeah. And I'm speaking on social media, because if yep. you don't necessarily know them, how do you build that that trust offline? How do you retain them and, you know, to build that long term responsibility? Because once we bring them in as a customer or a consultant, you know, we're we're responsible. Oh, well, yeah. that's, how I, that's how I look at it anyway. For a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I don't like to rely on. um companies, even though I love like so many of the companies, just because it doesn't matter how great a company is, you've got your own unique communication style. So whatever the company does is extra. So um, right. there are options and I'll give you options. It could be um, obviously, you know, I know many of you are signed up for your own like texting platform and you can have specific automated texts that go through to nurture them. Um, there's a balance between uh, feeling like it's good customer service and not being overbearing. And so what I like to do is I like to just say my um, insecurity or my uh, projected objection. And so if I'm worried about being like overbearing, I just let them know, like, you know, the beginning, hey, you're going to receive X amount of messages over this amount of days, not trying to spam you at all. I pride myself on great customer service, and I'm going to give you some very good, uh, insightful information that's going to help you with the product. So, you know, as your team scale, uh, it's more important to have automation. You feel like at the beginning, you're just like, you know, I don't have a big enough team. I don't have enough people. Then that's fine. Uh, if you want to do it, you know, and create your own little Excel spreadsheet and you just, you could already have a doc of like the messages that you would typically send and you can do that as well. And so, you know, I'm trying to turn this person that doesn't know me well, that's interested in the product. And I'm trying to build some, some quick trust and quick rapport with them. And also a set of expectations. Understand this. When someone's bought a product from you, they want to be sold. Before that, they don't really, really want to be sold. They're not sure. But after they bought, you selling them is reaffirming their decision. And so you're yeah. like, I know when I buy something, sometimes I look up like, wait, what's it supposed to do again, right? Like it's supposed to help me with this and this. Right. And like you're-, you're Yes, I did up. that today. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like all the time. It doesn't matter what- it is like, you know, like I just bought some new little system um, for a product and it's like, I'm reading like instructions, looking at the YouTube video, like, I'm like, no, like sell me more on like why I like, yes. why this is going to help me. And so, you know, that's the post that I think a lot of people forget because they feel like they've already been sold, but yeah. it's like, you're looking for those things because you want it to work because you, you, you bought it. And so that's important to understand after. And so even sending out like, like little testimonials um, and some could be more extreme and also send some that are subtle because if they don't have the extreme, they're going to be like, well, crap, like I didn't feel anything extreme. What's wrong with me? And so like I give an example with something like uh, pro tandem, I'm just thinking out loud how I would sell it is, is like, look, some people feel like results right away. And other people, it's like anything, if if you feel such a small incremental difference, you know, you don't know how you would have felt. Like when we're tired versus not tired, it's like, we don't know, like today I'm 89% tired, but if, if I weren't on the product, I'd be 87. Like you don't know what would have been. And so you find a way to create analogies like that. But over the course of time, it, it's indisputable based on research, what this is going to do for you. And then you list the, the benefits that are compliant, right? Oh, yeah. Of what it has done without making guarantees or promises. And right. so it's like, you're selling them on both like the others yeah, extreme, but also if you don't see extreme, 
here are some of the subtlety. So I do that first and foremost. Um, and then I would create like things down the road as well, because most people, and I've done this with two companies that have done over a billion dollars in sales, gone through their studies. When someone orders products for four months, typically they become a lifetime customer. Now, lifetime, like they just call it that. It's not like 30 yep. years or 20 years, but like they're for a long time. Yeah. And so your whole goal is first and foremost is how can you nurture them to the four months? Because now they've created a habit. Right. Then after that, you don't have as, as much of frequent um, contact, but you still want to continually like resell them on why it was such a great buying decision um, as they go. So that'll help with retention. Now, as far as like transitioning them, um, well, first I want to see, it, did I miss anything or anything else you want to cover? And then I can go into transitioning customers to, to builders. No, I think uh, that's, I that's that was beautiful. I've got several notes there. I know some people will ask, you know, which platforms you suggest. I've got a couple that I know of, but if there's- Yeah, any- and, and there's all different types. Like sometimes yeah. people create like a broadcast on Telegram. Right. Um, Cause you don't want to create like a chat that's like spammy and all over the place. <laughs> exactly. Some are Facebook groups, some are using like project broadcasts and texting, right? Yep. Uh, some are, you know, individual, some are creating their email as well. I, I like, even if you do email, it's got to be some sort of version of, of text because the open rate is just so, yeah. so high. Otherwise it's not. And then I think there's a couple of things with transitioning customers into builders that people really make huge mistakes with. And the first thing is, is the word business is very overwhelming to most people. So we think of it as like big and exciting. They think of it as overwhelming. So we're like, sure. hey, like you could do this as a business. Instantly, business is like a lot of responsibility. And they're like, no. So they they put up like, you know, they, they put up their guard right when you say that. So you have to ask the right questions to stair step them into the business without saying the word business. So it's like, you know, Michelle or Sean, right? Like, you know, like what's been your favorite part so far about the product. Now you notice I didn't say, what do you like, right? I said, what's been your favorite part? Cause I'm, I'm leading them to through positivity, right? right? And saying, what do you think that's so open-ended about the product? Instead, like, I want to be very specific on how I lead them. So it's like, what was your favorite part? Now from there, either they're going to give it to you or this is where people panic. Like, oh, like I'm not really feeling anything, right? Well, Hopefully you followed what I just taught you on the nurture and you can follow up with basically saying some of those same things, right? As you go, like, you know, like some of the research and, and basically you're not even making an issue. It's like, it's indisputable. You're not like, oh yeah, for some people it doesn't work. No, it works for everybody. It's like some people feel it more, some don't, but that's the cool part about this product. So we're not, we're not going to feed into those uh, insecurities. And I will tell you this. The objection that you hear the most is your insecurity yelling back at you. Mm -hmm. So if, why is it some people don't struggle with the money issue? That's not their insecurity. It's not that they don't hear it. It's when someone says it because that's not their insecurity because they know the value. It's a whisper. Mm -hmm. But if money is your issue and someone says, oh, like money, when they say it, it sounds like a yell, right? It's like, oh, they fought me. And so whatever you hear the most, whether it is that a pyramid scheme, right? That was my insecurity. It wasn't right. money for me. Like, it didn't matter if someone didn't have the money. I was like, the value is there, they'll find the money. But for me, like if they said network marketing or like pyramid, it was like, oh, dagger. Like it was, I was so insecure about it. Like so insecure about it. So that's kind of a little tidbit. And so I'll ask the right questions like, what was your favorite part about it? And then obviously it can go one of two directions. And then if they tell me, and then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, just sometimes I give a simple example. When I say example, I mean like literally like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, I just like anything, like if you love something, you go see a great movie, what are you going to do? You're going to tell people about it, you know, or, or a great restaurant. You're going to think like, who would this be a great fit for? Hey, same thing for this. Like if this is a product that, you know, you know how great it is, like who do you feel like would would have the most interest and who could this help the most? And then 
because again, I'm putting myself in their shoes. Their biggest fear is you're going to hard sell their friends. The last thing anyone wants is like some random person hard selling your friends, right? And so I take that objection out. Best presentations handle the objection during the presentation. So I'm explaining the psychology behind it, but all this stuff is like literally like one, two minutes. And so I'll say, and just so you know, don't worry. Like I'm never going to like sell your friends. I'm not going to be that annoying person. I'm like customer service. That's all I am. I just answer questions for them. That's it. And then after that, you know, hopefully they try the product and if they like it, they keep ordering it. And if not, then that's totally fine. So I go that direction. And so then from there, then it's a balance of, you know, fab five is simple and sometimes you can get more and less, but I just fab five, like who are the five people? And then um, after that, right, then that's where, um, you know, I teach them how to make like a really good social media post and in a non-spammy way. And so typically I'll have leaders uh, have lots of screenshots of other people that have done it. And if other people haven't, then I tell everybody to kind of create a good one. They don't have to post it, screenshot it. We'll put it in Dropbox because a lot of times people don't have examples. So I say, Hey, here's, here's an idea. Why don't you, um, you can share it with some friends. Why don't you make this post? Anyone who ends up buying, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw some, some product your way. Like you're helping me out. I'm helping you out. And they're always not always, but typically they're like, oh, that's great. We're not going to do it in like salesy way. Like you're not even selling right now. It's just a product that you like. You've, you've tried, you know, think it's incredible. Other people should have it. And they're like, oh, great. So I go both those routes. Now, as soon as someone buys, now I transition and I give them the option. I don't say business. I say, hey, look, trust me. Like I'm more than happy. I just don't want to come off as like selfish. Like I can take this, send you some products. Like I appreciate it. Or if you'd like, what I can do is give you credit for it and you can make a little bit of commissions on it. Up to you. What do you prefer? And so that's kind of, because my whole goal is, I think too many times we like try to skip steps and people think it's way harder and more complex than it really is. And so for me, I'm stair-stepping them through this process um, to help them out to, you know, to get them going. And then eventually they're like, you know, they got a couple people and it's like, they're doing the business without even knowing they're doing the business right. in a good way. Right. Yeah. I love that. So you're having the actual customers create a post about a product that they are totally in love with. Right. Yeah. That's I, I think that'll be the next uh, big wave is uh, the teams that figure out this, the best on how to get, you know, cause you know, from 2000, 15 to like 2000, you know, now really the big wave was how do we shift the ratio from customers to distributors being higher and higher and utilize social media. Right. And that became great. And I think the next wave is, is customers are our best base. Mm -hmm. How do we find ways to, um, you know, get referrals out of customers through uh, social media um, I think that'll be, you know, the the next big thing for uh, teams and, and leaders to crack. That was I huge. It. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah cause I think that that is some of the challenges. You know, we have uh, people that can bring in ten thousand in new sales. They've got the opposite problem of you. You had Rob. Yeah. Like the sales, <laughs> it comes to them. It's converting them over to have a team that wants to do it. And realistically, it doesn't take very many people that treat it like you treat it yeah. to have blow up and really, really make some serious money on, on the network marketing side, but it's finding those people that'll do that. So I love that. Uh, you just kind of stair stepping them, like you said, into already doing consultant behaviors without even realize that that's what they're doing. Um, so a, a lot of our group now is getting into like VAs and other people that are supporting some of the stuff that they don't necessarily have the time for or the mm -hmm. desire for. What are some things that you would say, I would keep this part in house as opposed to using a VA for X? Yeah. Um, I mean, everyone's a little different. I say if, if typically, and there's certain exceptions, if someone can do it 80% as well as you outsource it, 
Um, the more successful you are, the more the ratio of where you spend your time goes. So everyone says 80, 20, it's not true. It's the more successful you are, it's, you know, 90, 10, 95, five, I'm 95, five now. Um, you know, I've got a traditional business, non-network marketing that will be launching. I've got a whole PR company with Fraser I'm doing. I've got a social media, uh, company with, you know, for network marketing with, with Fryer, my mm-hmm. speaking, my consulting, I coach high school tennis teams. I do the teenage mastermind sessions. I'm on the freaking HOA board. Cause it runs the tennis club, yeah. which is like my greatest nightmare. I'm on the Utah Tennis Association. I'm in charge of the NIL deals for BYU tennis men's and women's teams. Those are just the things I can remember right now. Right. And yet I still have time. Um, and it's because it's 95% of my time on the 5% and most important tasks. And so, you know, I would list out what those things are. So, you know, like the things we teach don't confuse being busy with being productive, that we're actually, we're, we're becoming better and better, right? As successful people, just do the basics better. How can we keep doing the basics better and better and better? The things that you you don't outsource are your own voice. So, you know, social media, uh, you want you want to create your own content. Um, that's that's you know where it's super super genuine. Um, if you have someone help you with it, what I would do is is I would just go create a, a document where you create all of your content, and then you've got you know all of your maybe like videos or photos they can take from. And then if they know your voice really well, you can say, Hey, you can enhance a little, but only with my approval. Yeah. So it's like, got, you know, the vast majority, it's your voice with just, you know, maybe like an editor, like you write a book and someone edits the book, it's still your book. Um, So that's the first thing. Uh, Obviously the second thing is, is, you know, for, for, for all of you, you know that, you know, there's certain things you just can't outsource, like the personal touch with, with your leaders. Like that's a top 5% task uh, that you're making sure that you're doing. Um, You know, there, there are things that are kind of debatable as far as like reaching out to people, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, people create automated voice messages and you're going to go for masses, but it's not going to have the personal touch. And so if it's something like that, where you're just not sure, test it. Like no. stop creating ideas and theories of yes, it works or no, it doesn't like go test it, like test everything doing, you know, with maybe some sort of automation and and without, and it's the great quote that which isn't measured cannot be improved. And so, you know, if you're not sure on something, then make sure you test it. But I think the top thing is really just your voice. And that would be stuff that's, you know, specific to uh, social media uh, as well as personal connections. Like for me, uh, when I was building, and I still do it now, I actually do it even more. I always had 350 non-business related reach outs a month, which is only like 10 plus a day. And they take less than 10 minutes. And I would look on Facebook, right? Instagram, I would look in my phone, people I haven't spoken to. And, you know, it's not fake chit chat. It's just being a good human being. That's yeah. it. It wasn't like 10 minute conversation. It was just quick voice messages or texts or yeah. you know, finding something in common, or maybe it was someone new that added you. Like, I'm not going to say, Hey, how are you? Right. Or, Hey, how's the weather? Right. right. Like it's, but it's just creating, cause I hate fake chit chat. It's just creating genuine connections quickly. Um, and that's the key thing is just doing it quickly, uh, as you go. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of how I look at it as far as outsourcing. I'm always trying to challenge, what can I outsource and what, what am I great at? And whatever I'm great at, it's like, I'm going to spend more and more time at what, what I'm great at and outsource the other things that take away from my, my energy. Yeah. Um, and also don't necessarily need me like creating a PowerPoint. I got a guy that he creates the best images. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't need to spend an hour creating a PowerPoint. So I create the, the content, yes. all the wording. I send it a doc totally. and it says slide, slide, slide. And yes. I told him to go create it. And then after I edit it in like five minutes, I just did that for, I'm speaking to ANMP and sent that. And the guy took like two weeks because it was a long one. And I'm like, great, I'll go edit what I like and don't like now. Yes. Yeah, I love yes. it. I love it. Well, we don't want to take a ton of your time, but if you can give this group an assignment to immediately do right out here to create content throw out something they should spend the next 30 to 45 minutes 
flying out of here to do right away? Yeah. So creating content is that specific question? Yeah. 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 So what I like to do, and some of you guys already know this and you guys have done this is uh, the first thing I do is, is I actually use chat GPT now. Okay. That's the first thing I do. And I started u- utilizing it after my mastermind in Europe last year. And I was like first overwhelmed. And then I was like, I just got to buy in. So rather than Googling anything now, uh, I chat GPT everything so I can learn how to use it better and better and better. Um, and so the first thing I do is, is I go into chat GPT anytime I want to create any type of content and I put in exactly what it is I want to create. So I just had a training that I did for an hour and this gal said she had no content for, um, she wanted to talk about metabolism, health and wellness and belly fat. And she's like, I just don't know what to talk about. So I said, okay, great. Give me more details. So I put that all in there, metabolism, health and wellness, belly fat. I said, and I said, what does he want to create? She said, reels. I said, well, what don't you want to do? She's like, well, I don't want to focus just on solutions. I want to focus on, you know, more value. And I said, okay. And so I I got like specific and added in more details. Like, you know, okay. Like, who do you want to talk to? All those different things. And it's not like the ideas are always like the best right away, but it's like, okay. So the first one is myth busting. Create a series of where reels tackle a common myth about metabolism or belly fat. For example, myth eating after 8 PM increases belly fat. Now, look, you may say, well, that's actually bull crap. I don't believe that. So then you just say, okay, great. I love number one, myth busting. I don't believe that one. Uh, can you give me 10 examples of myth buster reels that I can use? Now, of the 10, you may only like three or four, but instantly now you got your ideas. So it's like you use chat GPT as your virtual assistant. And then from those ideas, I create my own. Now I'm done creating my own. And I say, okay, from these, here's the four that I like for belly fat. Now that you know the type that I like and don't like, can you give me six more ideas? And so I keep going back and forth, back and forth uh, for these. And then even still with it, it may be like, okay, I like this one that you gave me that was blah, blah, blah. Can you give me three points to this? And are there any great quotes or any great research that I can use for it? And they say, yes, I go further. I say, great, I'm using, now I'm just stuck on this one I'm doing. I say, great. Can you give me five great hooks to start out my reel with that are super compelling that people will watch? And so again, I'm being very like, I'm just training it and giving it specific details and I'm giving it, you know, five so I can choose which one. And then I choose the one that I like. And so you see, I I keep questions or the answers that we teach, but it's the same thing with chat GPT. It's like my battle buddy, a virtual assistant where, you know, it helps me whenever I'm stumped on ideas for creating, um, you know, content is as I go. And so, you know, now if I create a post, what I'll do is, is I'll say, Hey, please keep this post word for word as much as possible. And I'll say help with grammar. Also, can you please help find a quote that's relevant? And then sometimes it could be like, Hey, do you have any like study or research that can go with this? Or, do you have other, any other insight you can add to this? So it's keeping it. And then can you put it in bold so I can see what you added? So again, I, I'm using it as not like a, I want it to create because I want my own unique voice. Right. Uh, right. But what I'm doing is, is a battle buddy to help enhance any ideas of anything that I have so that I, I'm just getting even more content. And it's like, this is like Google on steroids because basically yeah. it's just searching Google to compute exactly what it is you ask. But again, questions, the answers, you got to be really good at asking questions upon questions, upon questions, layer upon layer, upon layer, upon layer. As you do that, it's just like, it's amazing. I love that. That's awesome. So So good. So good. I know we need to, we need to let you get back to your amazing life. But anything else, Sean, any last words, Rob? I have so many questions in my head, but we are over time. So we want to respect you. But last words to these incredible humans that are truly family to us. They they do in person, they do social media, they've got families. They are just, like I said, incredible humans that just want to go out and make a bigger difference in the world. Anything else that you want to leave them with? Yeah, very simply, uh, you guys got an incredible leadership little uh, team event here uh, and you're going to have a million ideas. And just like we teach everyone, don't be the brick know-it-alls. It's the new levels, new devils. So what's the one thing you're going to implement, 
right? Because you're going to have different challenges. I gave you one, you're going to have challenges from other people. Uh, but you got to decide like, no, I am doing this one thing. And so I call it a priority list. So there's to-do lists, there's notes you take from everything, but I create priority lists. And then I prioritize that priority list of one, two, three, and I'm not moving on to two, three, four until I do number one. So what's the one thing? Because the goal in life is progress. We're happy when we're progressing. And as crazy as that sounds, like, you know, it's true. If you go from 10 grand a month to eight grand, you're bummed out. If you go from five grand a month to six grand, you're excited because it's progress. Everything is about direction. We're drama kings and queens, right? When things are going well, we think they're better than they really are. When they're going poorly, we think they're worse than they really are. So it's learning to manage those emotions. And your whole goal is, is just progress. And so we want to have that progress post events. What, what are you going to actually implement and take action? Because it's learn, action, 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 learn, apply, apply, apply. It's not learn, 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 action. You guys all know that. That's why you're leaders. And now it's just doing the things we already know and doing them better and better and better. So, and I, uh, you guys are awesome. I, I, like I said, I love who you guys are. You know, it's always fun when I get to find, you know, like-minded, just people and awesome human beings. You guys are just great examples to the industry as both leaders and, and just, you know, I love, I love how strong you guys believe in God and your family and, and all the things. So happy to support in any way I can and yeah. love what you guys are doing and just keep crushing it. Mm. Big hug, Rob. Come on. I, well, like, oh it, should, it should be in like Bora Bora, right? We were like across yeah. from each other, right? I know. That's so cool. Nice. So we funny. We were literally there. Yes. <laughs> we'll go. Well, like, we have to go across the we'll world back. to be right next to We'll video. go back. But yeah. we will. We'll go back and other places. But thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for um, all of this wisdom. I have so many notes. There were major golden things in there that we're totally going to take away. And I love the one thing though, because that's powerful. Mm, that's powerful. One real quick last thing though, Rob, if people want more of your yes, stuff, thank you. yes, what, where would you send them first? Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can always just follow me on social media, just my name, Rob Sperry, Facebook or Instagram. Um, and then we just created like total positivity, a lot of in-depth articles, Fraser Brooks and I, um, and that's just called network marketing buzz, okay. uh, dot com. So network marketing buzz, and that's going to be a big, just positivity PR website, like not focusing on negativity lawsuits, like clickbait stuff, like just pure value. And so, nice. um, we just barely launched that and, um, you know, that'll be a great place for, uh, for content for all of you as well. Cool. Cool. Oh, I Welcome. love that. So appreciative of you, your time, your expertise. Keep changing the world. Um, keep taking photos at all of these amazing places because it's fun okay. to see. Likewise, we'll just inspire each other. I love it. I love it. Inspiring. All right. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for tuning in and uh, go make it happen. Yes, 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 yes. And so much to say. Thank